Which Canadian team could hoist Lord Stanley's mug? And is Connor Bedard ready to take over the NHL? Hey everyone, welcome into Off the Post, Post Media's NHL Roundtable. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Sports columnist Steve Simmons and Toronto Sun Maple Leafs writer Terry Koshan. And guys, it's finally here, the start of another regular season, and a lot of eyes in Canada are in on two markets specifically, Edmonton and Toronto. Both of you guys, of course, very familiar with the latter. Steve, the Oilers, though, seem like the trendy pick this year to win the Stanley Cup. Are they the Canadian team with the best chance, or is there another team that's potentially getting overlooked? Well, I, I think it's two teams, but to me, it's Edmonton and Toronto. But I'm going to start with Edmonton because I think that's the most obvious place to start with the best player in the NHL, maybe the second best player in the NHL with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. The Oilers have been knocking on the door, so to speak. They've been around. They've had a couple of rounds. They've had chances. If their goaltending is a little bit better and they maybe pick up a sandpaper player or two somewhere between now and the end of the season, I don't think the Western Conference is all that strong. So I think I can see them getting through, um, you know, staying healthy, of course. But I like their team better really than any other team uh, across Canada. I think, frankly, four or five of the teams across Canada have no chance at all. So to me, it's the Leafs and or Edmonton, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with Edmonton one in that position. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm with Steve there. I, as far as the Leafs go, but you know what? It's funny. What applies to the Oilers applies to some of the other teams as well, and the Leafs are one of them. Maybe not the sandpaper part, but, you know, it, it comes down to goaltending. Now, the Leafs have a great core. We get that, but... Neither, as Steve kind of alluded to, none of those players really, you know, match McDavid or Dry Sellux. They're the two best players in the league. However, you know, if Brad for Living does make some uh, adjustments on the blue line before the deadline in March, and they get the Samson off and Wall goaltending that they think they're going to get, I think they can be there. But yeah, other than the Oilers and Leafs, there's not really much. Uh, there's not really much else to consider. Having said that, I, I'm just, and I'm not saying that I'm thinking of the Winnipeg Jets as a contender now by any stretch out of Canada, but they've smoothed the waters there now with the signings of Shifley and Hellebuck, and I think that's big for that team. Uh, where it, where they can uh, take that positive going into the season, we'll have to see. And when you have a goalie like Hellebuck in net, I suppose uh, lots of things are possible. But um, yeah, Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell at Edmonton, if they can, if they can, uh, uh, you know, be really good for the Oilers. I would think that the Oilers are going to be uh, the team coming out of Canada, but the Leafs might have something to say about that as well. What we have to realize, Aiden Hill won the Stanley Cup last year. Yeah. If we were sitting here in exactly this position last October, and someone said, Vegas is going to win the Stanley Cup with Aiden Hill as the goalie, I think we would have declared been declared crazy. So sometimes things happen that you just don't possibly predict on or think about. I like that team, but I didn't like their goaltending going into the season, just as I'm unsure a little bit about the Leafs goaltending, just as I'm unsure a little bit about about Edmonton's goaltending. So what we've well, seen in recent years is is unless you've got Vasilevsky, you know, there's a lot of guys who, who have won cups that you wouldn't look at and say, boy, I can't believe that guy is a Stanley Cup champion. Well, Braden Holpe, Darcy Kemper, and Jordan Bennington have combined to win how many Vezina trophies? Not a lot, right? To Steve's point, you need the guy to get hot at the right time. Vegas got it last year. Aiden Bill, Aiden Hill might come back this year and be nothing close to what he was. But if, you know, in Toronto, Samson off, Rawal can get it done, who knows? Anything would be possible. Sometimes you just need adequate goaltending if your team is that good. And right. the one thing interesting about the Oilers to me is, McDavid's had some fantastic playoff runs. Drysaddle's had some fantastic playoff runs. The team has yet to have a fantastic playoff run. That's yep. the difference between Toronto and Edmonton. Uh, Matthews and Marner and Nylander have not had that explosive playoff that McDavid and Drysaddle have had. What happens when they do it? Yep. Terry, based on some of the highlights we've seen so far in the preseason, it looks like Connor Bedard is ready for the next step in his hockey career. But should we temper expectations for the number one overall pick, or is this kid really the next big thing? No, I don't temper anything. Why would we do that? I mean, uh, you know, evaluate preseason and all you want, or or what kind of uh, you know uh, uh, the worth you put in that. Uh, the, the things he did, he did in the Western Hockey League, the things he's done for Team Canada. 
the hype is real and you know maybe what holds them back is we know that in chicago obviously he's not surrounded by a great crew there a great hockey team uh not when they finished close to last overall and uh you know but he, he's the next face in the national hockey league i firmly believe that now Connor McDavid's going to have something to say about that because he's not going anywhere. Neither is Austin Matthews and and people like Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby certainly are taking their sweet time into their mid to late thirties to uh, to have less of an impact on the game. But uh, Bedard is real, and uh, you know I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. We get him here in Toronto on Monday night, so we get that visit done and over and out of the way quickly. But uh, I think he's going to live up to every expectation. I really do. If you go through generational players and you say, what did a generational player do in his first year? I know everyone wants to temper numbers and don't put too much pressure on the kid. He's a generational player. Yeah. Sidney Crosby scored 103 points as a rookie. Um, Connor McDavid was at 87 point pace. He missed a, a bunch of games as a rookie. Austin Matthews, 69 points and 40 goals as a rookie. Eric Lindros, 102 points as a rookie. On a, on a game per points basis, Alex Ovechkin, 106 points as a rookie. So I can see Bedard, and especially in a place like Chicago, which is not unlike Crosby going into a Pittsburgh that had nothing. Chicago doesn't have a lot, which means yeah. you're going to play first power play, which means you're going to play first line, which means every offensive time opportunity uh, in the offensive zone, you're going to get that that chance. I can see him getting in the 80 to 90 point range. I know everyone's saying 60 to 70. I'm going higher. I'm going higher based on what Crosby and Ovi and Matthews and Lindros and all these guys who I would call generational players have done. Well, you know, it was interesting a few weeks ago, or maybe not that long ago, it came up at camp, uh, you know, Austin Matthews' four-goal game to start his career in Ottawa in 2016. And someone jokingly said, "What well, can, can Bedard hit six in his first game? And Matthews kind of answered, well, he, he basically, he's paraphrasing here, but he wouldn't be surprised. And I think he was only half kidding. I, I mean, it, it's not going to happen. We know that. But uh, listen, I, like I'm with Steve, too, on this. 60, 70 points, that's an awfully low bar for this kid to hit. I think he's going to uh, get through that. I don't know if 100 points is attainable in his first year, again, going back to who he's going to be playing with. But he's not far from 100-point season in the NHL. All right, Kayla, you guys go without making a Stanley Cup prediction. Steve, we'll start with you, who is going to be hoisting the hardware at the end of June. I can't tell you the last time I was right about this, Rob. So <laughs> every, the other. every October, I will make a bold prediction. And, you know, by April 17th or something, you know, that team's out or whatever the date happens to be. So, you know, I like to look and see, okay, who has been close? Who has Who has this? And, and I qualify it. I want to see a team that's got a goalie. I want to see a team that's got an A defenseman. And I want to see a team that's got a variety of ways to score. And I'm going to, I'm going to go with the New York Rangers. And the reason is, if you look at Peter Laviolette's record as a head coach, his first year with new teams, he does exceptionally well. I believe he took the Philadelphia Flyers to the Stanley Cup Finals his first season there. Um, he, he, he might have done the same thing or close to it in Nashville. Um, this is probably a better team than either of those teams are with Adam Fox. It's just their spinning goal. Um, and I don't know if there's one Eastern Conference team uh, that I like better than them. So I, I'm going I'm going to go with the New York Rangers beating the Edmonton Oilers in the final. Yeah, I, I would think that if the Edmonton Oilers make it to the final and they're playing the Rangers, they'd win that series. But I don't, I don't see the Rangers getting there. You know, if we're talking about teams that have kind of knocked on the door a bit and haven't won uh, out of the East for me, that team would be the Carolina Hurricanes. A uh, strong lineup all the way through. Again, you know, the goaltending of Freddie Anderson and Antti Rantic, and they get it done. I believe they could. Um, so Carolina's been there. I don't know if I would pick them to, to win, though. I might look. I know Steve mentioned earlier about some of the teams that may or may not come out of the West. It's it's not a overly strong Um I like the chance that the Vegas could repeat. Uh, can 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 Colorado win? Uh, you know, without Gabriel Landeskog, uh, it's possible. But I'm, I'll, I'll go with the Carolina Hurricanes, just given the fact that you know we see, we seem to see these other than what Tampa Bay did, their three year run when they won two years in a row, and then they lose to Colorado in the final. A lot of these teams you don't want to say are one and done, but they've knocked on the door for a while. Um, you know, Washington was a good example. Vegas certainly last year. The Colorado by the time they won, and for me, uh, perhaps it'll be the Carolina Hurricanes this year. If Vegas stays healthy, 
that is that team is going to be hard to play against. That's yeah. a hard team to play against. You don't you don't look. There's no star up top other than maybe Jack Eichel that you look at and say, "Wow, that yeah. guy is the guy." But the way they play as a group and that six man defense, probably the best six man defense in the NHL. Again, if healthy, that's a great defense. I yeah, really like Carolina the way Terry talks about it. Yeah. My problem with with the Hurricanes is when you need a goal, who's going to score it? And I don't know if they have that kind of guy in their lineup that you turn to and say, that guy in the big game, when you're two all, you need a goal in the third period, he's going to get it. And I think that's one of the things that's eliminated them from the playoffs in recent years is in those close games, they have trouble winning in the end because they don't have breakout offensive players. And I, I want to go back to uh, Colorado for a second because that was a phenomenal Colorado team that won the cup. Uh, they still have Gail McCarr back. He, he's the best defenseman in the NHL. They have McKinnon. He's the top four forward. Um, and but but then it thins out. It's, it's not the defense is okay after McCarr, but they don't have Kadri now, and they don't and they don't have Landeskog. And guys that were really central to them winning aren't there. If they you know you know they went out and got uh, I can't remember his name from Nashville. Um, you know, who's going to play center for them? T to me, you know, that's not bad. And that's, they don't have anybody who's like Landis Cobb. And, and I don't know how you replace guys like that. Well, again, it's going to come down to we can, we can talk about this all day, but if Aiden Hill doesn't have the season he had, doesn't pick off in the playoffs, like, uh, or sorry, the regular season, the playoffs, then, then Vegas won't win. You know, it's all there is to it. You can't, you can get, it's Steve made the, you know, you get by with adequate to good goaltending, but. Not subpar. That'll do you in every time. And, uh, you know, we'll Logan Thompson see. might be better than Aiden Hill. We don't even know that. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to find out. The thing that I like about all this, too, is, you know, the, the parody in the NHL allows us to have all of these different feelings about who could win the Stanley Cup. And you'd make an argument right now, probably for six or eight teams and have a pretty good go at it. And, uh, you know, you know, seven of those people would be wrong. But I just like the fact that it's not a it's not a big repeat every year. I think you know Tampa's run Pittsburgh before them. That's an anomaly. We're not going to see that in the National Hockey League. I think Tampa's run might be over. Um, just by oh, emotion, right? it is over. It is over. Yeah. And, and, I feel like you the Boston Bruins, Steve. They didn't they didn't come up at all in our little conversation here. They had their chance last year. All time yeah. all time team wins most wins in NHL history most points in NHL history. And then a failed first round of the playoffs. Well, we also have mentioned the Florida Panthers, who played for the Cup last year. I don't. I'm yeah. not even sure they'll make the playoffs. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm a Panther believer. And I think not. the I think the Bruins are. They're going to make the playoffs because their defense is so good and their and their backside is so good. Um, but I don't see them as a contender because who's going to be their centers? Who's playing down the middle? And, and so you know, with Pavel Zaka and Charlie you know, Coyle to start. What's that? You're, you're, you're Pavel Saka and Charlie Coyle to well, start. Your name point a is team well that has won the Stanley Cup without an A center. Yeah, there I don't believe none. it's happened. No. Yeah. Every single team has had one of those guys. Usually you need an A center and an A defenseman. And um, by the way, the New York Rangers have an A center and an A defenseman. Yeah. But, yeah, lots of intrigue around the NHL. I can promise you we will definitely revisit these predictions uh, come the end of the regular season. But as always, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Who do you think is winning the Cup this year? Let us know. For Steve Simmons and Terry Koshan, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time on another edition of Off the Post.